<laughs> speaking, speaking of heavy. Well then, my little bunny britches. Notes from the bookstore will not be seen this week so that we may bring you a Pope on Film special. A long and wonderful and very dirty edition of Steve's Historical Approximations. <laughs> this is a reoccurring segment here on the podcast where we get a story from history and I take it and I uh, nurse it. I breastfeed it. Yeah. Yeah. And I put it in a little onesie and change its diaper a little bit and carry it until I've gotten this historical moment and reworded it in my own sort of voice. Yes. It, is it 100% the truth? No, it's about there. <laughs> and this week's story is a good one. This week's story has to do with religion. This week's story has to do with Christianity. This week's story has to do with NYPD Blue. All right. And it has to do with gay Christian sex orgies. So really good stuff. So this week's story comes to us from the good folks at the Southern Poverty Law Center, which right. I, 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 I hear the word Southern Poverty Law Center batted around a lot. So I looked up the Southern Poverty Law Center, didn't really know who they were or what they did. So apparently the Southern Poverty Law Center is an evil progressive Jew run organization dedicated to ruining the lives of kind hearted Christians like you and I, Bunny. Yes. Because I all we want to do. About them. Yeah. Because all we want to do is spread the Bible. Kill abortion doctors and spread the Bible. Is that a crime? <laughs> I thought we lived in America. <laughs> in America. Is it, an, is it also a crime to want to get rid of all the gays? No, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, I don't believe in these things, by the way. Just want to be clear if anyone's listening for the first time yes. and are a bit confused. Small aside here. Uh, Christians are overly supportive. Uh, so many Christians are overly supportive of the nation of Israel. Yes. Not that they don't deserve support, the nation of Israel. It's just that uh, Christian support is disingenuous because it, 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 Christians give disingenuous support to the nation of Israel because they're all like, we must support Israel. Why isn't the government doing more to support Israel? Yeah. They're anti-Israel. We need to be pro-Israel. We need to help out Israel. Why isn't the U.S. government doing more to help Israel? Guys, Israel is in the book we read. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, guys, in this book that was written so many millennia ago, they said that when the magical guy in the sky comes back, he's going to want Israel to yeah. be around. Mm -hmm. It's like seriously, honestly, legitimately Christians come to the aid of Israel only because Israel's in a book that they like. It's as if England, it's as if England got real obsessed with a small Eastern European country because it was called Hogwartsia. Mm hmm. And all the British people are like, we must do what we must to protect Hogwartsia. Well, there there are good reasons for supporting Israel because it's really yes. good to have a friend in the Middle East. But mm -hmm. like Israel is just as batshit insane as everyone else in the fucking Middle East. True. But, you know, it would take America because we won the war, World War II and all that. And we were like, world leaders at that point it would take a it would take america though to say oh israel yeah let's make a home for israel and you know how we'll do it by taking these people who are already there and pushing them out of their country yes 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 because it's that's worked so way. well for us <laughs> yeah that's the american way that's how we do it yeah I thought this was America. 
You know, because so, you can get into a heated debate over Israel and Palestine, but it, it's hard not to say that Palestine doesn't have a point. Yeah. They were pushed out of where they were living Yeah, for these other people who now bomb them. And yeah, then they do not- terrorist attacks in return. So, so the Southern Poverty Law Center classifies the American Family Association as a hate group for their extremist views on abortions, yeah. Muslims, and especially gays. Uh-huh. Ooh, the dreaded gays. Mm-hmm. And that is what this historical approximation is all about. The American Family Association, gaiety. And Christian orgies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, my love of the American Family Association and their broadcasting arm, the American Family Radio, is well documented. Probably too well documented. (laughs) But I love American Family Radio. I mainly listen for American Family News every hour on the hour during the weekdays. They play Christian news. Yeah. Okay. And it's four minutes of Christian news. And I really like it because in the beginning, it's it's good to listen to it because they try and rush through all of the important stories to get to the stories they want to talk about. Okay. American Family News. I'm Steve Jordahl. A massive 8.3 thousand earthquake in Mexico. Let's talk about that for 30 seconds. Now let's talk about this baker. Mm-hmm. Who only wanted to discriminate against people who are different. Yes. Wah! It's really, <laughs> I love listening to American Family Radio. I love it. And they have one of their reporters on American Family Radio. This is true. One of their reporters is named Rusty Pugh. Yeah. No, that's a I, wonderful name. He's named after something Christians use. I don't see why I would have to declare my sexual orientation to get some cookies. You know, I... Yeah, yeah. You know, we're going to have to go into every shop everywhere and hi heterosexual yeah y- you know so it's, it's, no <laughs> yeah it's it's ridiculous oh crap uh i'm sorry uh global force wrestling and the imperial wrestling <laughs> federation the an Imperial Wrestling Revolution are having a uh, wrestling event um, about two blocks away from where I live. Yeah. On October twenty first, and it features a bunch of people I haven't heard of from a long for a long time. Like I see uh, Jack Swagger there; he's a wrestler from a long time ago. Um, MVP, I see him there. Yeah. And a bunch of other people who I don't know. And uh, 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 Pentagon Jr. Oh. Pentagon Jr. is coming. Yeah. To the Fire Lake Arena about a block away. Uh, like three blocks away from where I live. Oh, you're Lucha Underground's own Pentagon Jr. That is wonderful. I'm going to have to I absolutely have to go to this stupid thing. No. That's wonderful. Pentagon Jr. You know that Lucha Underground Season 4 is in trouble when Pentagon Jr. is coming to my crappy town. Yeah. Like, that's not the best sign of success there, Pentagon. <laughs> but anyway, anywho... Um, it, 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 but I, I'm I'm upset, Bonnie, that you don't like the name Rusty Pew. He's named after something Christians use to show their Christianity. Yes, that's like if there's a Catholic out there named Turquoise Rosary. <laughs> wow, 
wow, that doubles as his name and what he uses to show his Christianity. Yes, Rusty Pew. What a these, wonderful name. These people don't use pews. They they use folding chairs. Yeah, these aren't people. These aren't people that are kneeling for forgiveness. These are people uh, uh, waving their hands and uh, speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Ta-ta-ta. But with all the folding chairs, Pentagon Jr. would feel quite comfortable. Exactly, yeah. You can just have a hardcore match at any time. So, and I, and I am finding it very amusing picturing Pentagon Jr. attending church services. Yeah, breaking the pastor's arm. Yeah. But American Family Radio, AFR, is just one part of the massive multi-tentacled organization known as AFA, the American Family Association. They are a big lobbying group. They are a big uh, Christian organization, fundamentalist Christian organization. A bit of history on them. They were originally founded in 1977. Back then they were called the National Federation of Decency, which (laughs) gives you a much better understanding of AFA's motives. Yes. Originally, they were focused on cleaning up TV and radio and shit. But then they transformed into the American Family Association with a very generic sounding focus on issues that affect the family. So basically anything they don't like. Yes. Way to, way to cast a real wide net there, guys. <laughs> So they're known nowadays primarily as an active and they want me to sorry, and they want me to worry about Sharia law. Yeah. They want me to worry about Sharia law when that is exactly what they are doing. Yeah, they want you to worry about Muslims taking over your neighborhood while at the same time being concerned Christians that have to stop any TV or movie that has something that they disagree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've yeah, been, I've actually been watching sense. I've actually been watching a documentary on the life of Brian cuz it's so good. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it is so good. If you've, you you <clears throat> must have googled some of the uh must have YouTube some of the some of the interviews with John Cleese and Michael Palin and stuff. Yeah, probably. If if not, you have to see it where cuz they did a whole panel show with John Cleese and Michael Palin ran for like an hour, hour and a half and a vicar and some other religious. Yes. I am aware of that because that is the, uh, dramatic ending to a movie that they made. It was a live action movie about the making of the life of Brian. Yeah. Yeah. And they they played that whole thing the 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 vicar and the rabbi or whatever they didn't even see the beginning of the film they came in like ten minutes into the film mm-hmm. and they totally railroaded John Cleese and Michael Palin and Michael Palin being like the calm gentle level headed one ended up walking out because he was so pissed yeah yeah mm-hmm. like you got to be pretty twisted to piss off Michael Palin <laughs> yes you know. He's just traveling around the world with with his umbrella, having a pip pip cheerio time. Yeah. Like, what did you do? You broke Michael Palin. <laughs> I didn't even think this was possible. How did you do that? Mm-hmm. So that's the world that they want us to live in. Yes, they yes. want us to live yes. under their Sharia law. Yes. Yeah, they 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 want us to. They don't want to live under Muslim rule. They want to live under Christian rule. Right. So. And the rest of us don't want to be ruled by either fucking one of you. Yeah. So nowadays, the American Family Association is an activist organization, and they rally really well against pretty much anything non jesus y. They boycott TV shows, companies, brands, stores. Oh, no! We Christians need to band together and fight for decency. Guys, NYPD Blue is going to show a butt. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. A a fat, hairy butt, too. Yeah. 
Like no. we're gonna show a naked butt on TV. Where Jesus is crying. A butt that absolutely nobody really wanted to see to begin with. I didn't mean to lean. What the hell was the yeah. name of that actor? Danny something or Franz? For yes. Real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dennis Franz? I yeah. Think? Yeah. Just a hairy little mookie guy. Yeah. He is like, like two like, genetic uh, strands away from being Danny DeVito. Yeah. Okay, so now if anybody doesn't, everybody knows Danny DeVito. Picture looking at his hairy ass. N- nobody yeah. wants to see it, yet they still wanted to keep it off of television, which made it news and everybody knew about it. Not even Rhea Perlman wanted to see Danny DeVito's naked ass. They got divorced. Yeah. Nope. No. No. You know, I, think, I, I honestly, for the longest time, years and years, believed the only reason they were together was because they were the same height. <laughs> that's, good. that's a good... No, seriously, like, that, yeah, was, no. that was young Natasha thinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're saying we shouldn't be together because I'm slightly taller than you. Yeah, you're three inches taller than me. We have to break up. Yeah, <laughs> that sucks. Sorry. Yeah, well, so, the, the so the American Family Association is all like, oh... American Family Association people, no more Campbell's soup. You can't <laughs> use any Campbell's soup anymore. Guys, they bought an ad in The Advocate. <laughs> so now, guys, no Christian is ever allowed to, eat, to, to have soup anymore. Because gay Oops, people man. can't have soup. Yeah, these are the type of these are the type of bands that the American Family Association does. A lot of times they are very successful because they have their arms, uh, one million moms and one million dads, a bunch of old Christians that are just waiting for an email about something to get pissed about. Yeah. And so it, not only do they like attack a network for showing a show like Preacher, but then do you need me to move my stuff? No, I'm just wondering why you moved the box and then put this box in. To have the tablet be taller. But there was a box already mm. on my desk. It was too big of a box. I would have been like this. I would have had my neck up. I would have hurt my neck. And then I wouldn't have been able to do my job. And then I would have been fired. And then we would have been homeless. Is that what you want to be homeless? Uh, logic. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's unsound logic. That's cool. Hey, come on, Ellie. So they they get super upset about little things. Not like right now they're really pissed off about Preacher, about the show Preacher, obviously. Yeah. So not only are they attacking the network for showing Preacher, not only are they attacking the people who star and make Preacher, but also they are watching the show and finding out. <laughs> every commercial that's on the show and then attacking each brand individually. Ah. Oh. And because they have so many angry Christians, that's like 1 million angry emails that they'll get. Yeah. From Christians pissed off about how dare you run an ad during the uh, adult swim show Black Jesus. We'll never use your antiperspirant again. <laughs> and a lot of times they're successful. A lot of companies are pussies and they'll just tap out, you know? Yeah. They'll just tap out to massive amounts of pressure. But most of the time AFA's activism is kind of kind of wussy, like, oh my goodness, how dare 7 Eleven sell a Playboy? Yes. Like, ooh, you're really changing the world there, Christians. Mm-hmm. And it goes without saying that the American Family Association hates Target. Yes, I've mentioned yes, this, it does. I've mentioned this before on the show. Uh, the American Family Association, one million moms, one million dads. Their hatred for Target is massive, and it's a skew. It is a skew because number one, there is a major book chain out there that announced that their bathroom policy was one hundred percent the same. 
uh-huh. as Target. But you don't see Christians boycotting the bookstore, probably because they, uh, not, the majority of America is already boycotting it. Yes. <laughs> so there's that. But still, if these uh, angry Christians with the American Family Association were serious about Target's bathroom policy, they would also be picketing a major bookstore chain, which they are not. Number two, the way that the American Family Association rallies against Target is flawed. What they do is they say, Target needs to change their bathroom policy. This is dangerous, and it will lead to dangerous moments. Rapists will rape your daughters and your wives in the bathrooms and this is going to be dangerous and they need to change it and so what what uh, the american family association does now is they look for any bad story of anything that happens in a single target yeah and when they find that they use that as uh as proof that they're right so what uh, the american family association is doing is saying oh target's bathroom policy is causing danger because in Tupelo, Mississippi, a pervert was trying to take pictures of women in the dressing room. <laughs> That's why they should change their bathroom policy. Mm-hmm. It's like, wait a second. Those two things are in no way freaking related. Yeah. Yeah. Just because uh, transgendered people are allowed to use the bathroom of their choosing doesn't mean perverts now are taking upskirts yes yes you know those two things there's not a, a correlation there so and the i American- wonder what their religion may be yeah yeah that's that's another so the afa has some stupid beliefs but it's their twisted view on homosexuality that is that was the primary the primary cause of the Southern Poverty Law Center classifying AFA as a hate group in November of 2010. The AFA believes, among other things, among so many other things concerning gays, that the First Amendment doesn't apply to gays. Yes. The First Amendment actually only applies to Christians, apparently. I didn't know that. Thank you, American Family Association. (laughs) Their former director of issues analysis... Brian Fisher, who has a very popular radio show on the American Family Radio Network, said in 2015 that homosexuals and homosexuality gave us Adolf Hitler. Okay. In fact, that's a whole theme with the AFA, that the Nazis were gay, Adolf Hitler was gay, and the Nazi party was started in a gay nightclub. Yeah, the AFA (laughs) sucks is what I'm trying to say. Yes. In fact, in 2012, a jury was forming for a case where a lesbian couple had their child kidnapped, and the AFA, the American Family Association, stood up and came to the defense Mm -hmm. of the kidnappers, saying that it shouldn't be illegal to kidnap the children of gay parents because then you can smuggle them into what the American Family Association called normal homes yeah so just to reiterate the american family association condones child kidnapping yes yeah yeah yes I it's a bunch one. Of, i don't know what happened to christianity <laughs> you know mm-hmm. christianity has just been slowly mutating into this weird bizarre thing where christians can can just it's all about the Trump. About that the Trump. Nazis, about that the Trump. Nazis are gay. You should be able to kidnap children. It just it makes no sense to me. But yeah, to reiterate, the American Family Association supported a child kidnapper. That's so ironic. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what Alanis Morissette was singing about. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there's like a B side somewhere of that song. It's like rain on your wedding day if the American Family Association condoning child kidnapping. <laughs> it rhymes if you sing child kidnapping the right way. Yeah. In a Morissettian way, a Morissettian tone. But see, like Cronenberg, Morissettian. Yeah. But they they have oh they may not have been um, Amer- the American Family Association. But they have always been here, you know? 
Yeah. And there have always been those fights. Uh, when I was a kid, it was Karen Quinlan. Remember Karen Quinlan, baby? I, yeah. Oh. She she was in some, I, I don't know. She was basically a vegetable. She yeah. was in some kind of accident or she took drugs, I forget. She was in a coma forever. She was in a coma for like five years. And the doctors were saying there there is just no life in her anymore. And we're running the machinery for no reason. Mm. And the family agreed to that. So they would decide they decided to pull the plug and it was a huge fucking deal. Who is this again that you're talking about? Karen Quinlan. Karen Quinlan. Okay, gotcha. I would be if you're looking it up, I would be interested in the date on that. No, I'm not looking oh. it up. I'm just dressing as a giant raccoon. And then where where was it that the the which one after Karen Quinlan there was the woman who was dying and she was pregnant and Christians put up a big a big fuss about them aborting the baby yeah and then there was that Shriver woman was it Shriver I forget who was really sick and wanted to be taken off of life support and they raised a fuss about that and yeah. that is the problem that I have with Christians these things are not your business yeah yeah not your business these not things business. are not so don't have the plug pulled on you last I saw they were in there yes you should talk some more about things I need to get nail clippers for my wife <laughs> Sorry, Tut's my fault, y'all. Okay. That's Tut's your fault. Shucks, dude. I'm on a roll. I got viewers stopping to Hi, get honey. nail clippers. Hi, Destiny. Yeah, it's probably Destiny. <laughs> so, um, if you can believe it, Bunny, we haven't even gotten to the story part yet of no. this story. No. We haven't even gotten to the story part yet. So this was all just background stuff to explain to you just how horrible the American Family Association is. Now, here's the actual story. In 1998, the American <laughs> Family Association began a huge, huge advertising campaign. It was a huge campaign for the, the AFA. They called it their Truth in Love campaign. Okay. Where ads... And billboards and commercials and radio commercials and posters. They made shirts. There were ads in the paper and in magazines. It was a huge thing for the AFA. They really put their 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 balls into it. The basic message of the Truth in Love campaign from the AFA was that homosexuality was a disease and that Christianity was the cure, mm -hmm. and that basically any gay person can be completely cured of their gayishness, their gaiety, with therapy, the Bible, and, of course, Jesus. Yes. We used to go to a church in Sacramento. Was it Sacramento? It was, no, it was Sacramento. Remember the pastor? He was a pastor, and he was also, um, like, in Nam, and he met his wife in Nam, and... He would also sell blankets on the side of the road. And he had this like insane southern accent, so we would always be talking about the love of Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who this Jesus guy is. But yes. um, I wonder if he's heard of Jesus. Jesus, you know Jesus. Jesus was the unmarried guy who palled around with 12 other guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I thought that was your cousin. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, that was racist, by the way. I know. But, I, but, wubba dub dub dub. So, the face of the campaign, the face of the Truth and Love campaign, the star of the ads and whatnot, the face of it, 
Okay. Was an ex gay man named Michael Johnson, winner of the 1988 Whitest Name Award. Yes. Excited about that. Michael Johnson. Mm -hmm. He was once a hard living, wild, partying gay man. He did drugs and he had sex and he was just a hard partying gay man. Then, sadly, he contracted a, a HIV. And then, like so many other people, when faced with a life-threatening illness, Michael Johnson turned to Jishish. Mm -hmm. And Jishish magically cured him of his desire for dongs. <laughs> so, so Michael Johnson did a bunch of uh, newspaper ads and testimonials and commercials, the whole nine yards, um, telling people of his former gay ways and his triumph. His triumphant turn to Christianity. So here's the thing, okay? Uh huh. I'm preparing myself for this. The Truth and Love campaign was controversial, sure. Some people were upset. A lot of people were upset. But it was also a hit. In, <laughs> fa in fact, Bunny, maybe it was a bit too much of a hit. Okay. Because two years into the campaign, the American Family Association did a movie. Uh -oh. Okay. It's like a Christian documentary, a Christumentary, and it's called It's Not Gay. <laughs> it, it's an it's a ridiculous anti-gay documentary starring Michael Johnson and a bunch of other former gay men. But it was our former gay hero, Michael Johnson, who was front and center. Okay. He's the star, basically. He's the star of the whole story, right? So here's the real mistake in the story. The real mistake in the story happened after they made the movie because the geniuses at the American Family Association uh -huh. decided uh, to, to call up Michael Johnson and be like, hey, formerly gay partier Michael Johnson, we're so excited about this movie that we've decided to have you tour with the movie. Yes, you're touring all around the United States. Yes, you, former gay man turned devout Christian who would never think of turning away from Christianity. We're sending you to all of the major cities in the world. New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, L.A., San Francisco. We want you to save these poor, unfortunate men. These poor, unfortunate gay men. Save them. Turn them to Christianity. Oh, don't worry. You'll be paid generously. Yes, your pockets will be full of money as we send you to these massive, major American cities. Former <laughs> hard-partying gay man, Michael Johnson. Yes, and to reiterate... We're sending this former hard partying ex gay man to New York and San Francisco with a pocket full of cash. Yes. <laughs> and we want you to preach to these gay men, these gay men, these ex gay men, these men who are having problems with their sexuality. So go to them so that you can save them. Yes, we will be sending you to rooms full of desperate gay men so that you can <laughs> save them. To fill them with the spirit because all of these gay men. They have a hole in their heart, a Jesus-shaped hole in their heart. So what you need to do is you need to go in there and fill their holes. <laughs> fill these gay men's holes with the spirit of Jesus. I know you have the spirit in you, so you need to give it to them. Give it to these men. Mm -hmm. With your pockets full of cash, you need to go to these desperate, sweaty men who are confused about their sexuality and save them. <laughs> to fill them with the spirit fill them hard and fast with the spirit of Jesus yes you'll have to save these men you'll have to be going to all of these desperate sweaty men you're going to have to uh, lecture them or maybe even meet one on one do you think that that might be something you're interested in Michael Johnson having <laughs> uh, one on one encounters with uh, desperate gay men do you think that that might be interesting to you while also having your pockets full of cash Yes. Uh, and a suitcase full of poppers. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe do like a group scenario. We really want you to save a lot of people. So we're going to be getting you in a bunch of groups, some big groups, groups of big, desperate, sweaty gay men. Mm -hmm. You'll have to save these men. Pray with these men, not just praying, but also, you know, maybe laying your hands on them. Yes. Lay your hands <laughs> on these desperate, gay, sweaty men. 
you know, we are, it, all of these men are wrestling with demons because that's what homosexuality is. They're wrestling with demons. So you're going to have to help them. Yes. Wrestle with these men. Wrestle yes. with these desperate gay men. Fill the holes in their heart. Fill all of their holes. <laughs> Lay your hands on them. Lay them. Fill them. Fill a group. Fill their holes. Yes, this is a great foolproof plan, and nothing could possibly go wrong. We're the American Family Association. If if you Fuck if you sure. go on for about five more minutes with that, our gay listeners will get off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, Bonnie. Yes. You won't believe what happened next. I I cannot imagine what could possibly come next. He's going to go to the sweaty gay men with fistfuls of money in his pockets and a suitcase of of poppers, and he's going to preach the word of Jesus. He's going to preach it hard, and he's going to preach it long. Yeah. Yeah, in a shocking move that no one could have predicted. Things didn't go quite as planned for the American Family Association. Why? What could have happened? To be fair, though, I I, I want this to be as fair and balanced as last week's movie, um, Jesus Camp. So, to be fair and balanced, the tour was very successful. In the sense that a lot of men came to realize the dangers of homosexuality. But that was because Michael Johnson was having countless Christian gay orgies all over the nation without telling his partners of his status. Oh. Unprotected. Yeah. Because he can't use protection. He's a Christian. Mm -hmm. So it was successful in a sense, a very morbid sense. (laughs) Yes. The news of um, Michael Johnson's orgies, the hardest part of this story has been saying Michael Johnson. Yes. It's a combination of the king of pop and uh, one of the nation's greatest basketball players. And it's been hard for me. (laughs) Michael Johnson. Yes. The news of Michael Johnson's... um, Orgies, massive drug consumption, and unprotected sex didn't break until three years later in 2003. This caused Michael Johnson to shut down his ministry and move into a live-in facility where years and years later, he is now listed as the faculty's director of media relations. (laughs) It's so nice. It's so nice that the religious community can uh, lie and cheat and steal and ruin people's lives irreparably and still get a third, fourth, and fifth chance. That is so nice. Yes. Meanwhile, the American Family Association was sued for continuing to sell the movie It's Not Gay. So, (laughs) to be clear, the American Family Association stopped selling the movie in 2003. And they started selling it again in 2005. In fact, it is still available for for sale on their website to this day. Oh, man. Where it is called, quote, a fair and balanced approach to the challenging subject of homosexuality. <laughs> that story was uh, true, mostly true. Uh, And it came from the good folks at the Southern Poverty Law Center. And to be clear, I just want to say that we here on the Pope on Film podcast are in no way saying that the American Family Association is in any way responsible for giving a bunch of people HIV and AIDS. That's not what we're saying. No. I just want to reiterate, we're not saying that one of America's largest Christian lobbying organizations is not responsible for this man's fall uh, falling into hard drugs and massive unprotected gay sex orgies. That's not what we're saying. The right. AFA is in no way responsible for giving men all around the nation AIDS. That's not what we're saying. But what I am saying is you are saying, not me. They, well, you are saying, yes. What I am saying, yes. They don't particularly mind it. Probably. 
or 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 you know what it, they probably hate it they probably hate it but it also they're in no way liable for it i right. just want to keep reiterating these things on the very slim off chance that this video may one day be in some sort of legal court settlement <laughs> yes that right. I will have the, uh, w what is it, the stenographer read back what I said. Right. And it will be an old, like, 50-year-old woman saying, Steve said that the AFA is in no way liable. See, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. That's what Steve said. And they're, and they're not, really, because, you know, they can't control that guy's actions. You know. They definitely didn't help. Same but, thing this yes, but then, yeah. but then you hire him to a position as well. So no, you, you, you obviously don't mind that it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hey, David Crosby. I think <laughs> that you're going to make a great part of our team. And our team, of course, is this pharmaceutical company where we sell dangerously addictive opioids. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are going to fit in great here. Yes. I foresee no problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically, that's basically it. Yeah. And that is it for this week's installment of Steve's historical approximations. And let me tell you something. It takes a masterful, a masterful storyteller. Yes. To make people laugh at the spreading of HIV. So. <laughs> I guess you're yes. welcome. You know. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. been fun. And we will see you next time for more of Steve's historical approximations. And cut. <laughs>